Hey there viewers and welcome back. Weather's warming up outside. It's gonna be a nice day, nice afternoon rather. It's time to take a look at repacking the wheel bearings. So this is a super common practice. Um, do it every couple years, every five years, whatever. Just kind of depends on how much exactly you use your trailer. So if you use it a lot, if you boat trailer, things like that that get dunked in the water, it might be wise to do it a little more often. If it does a little bit of sitting, kind of use your discretion. So one thing you're gonna see on this, uh, I'm sure when you take a look around YouTube, you're gonna see about 27,000 different ways that you can repack wheel bearings. So uh, ask five mechanics, you're gonna get five different answers. Which way is the right way? It's the right way. So what I'm gonna show you here is my way. I've never had any issues with it. Um, a little bit more uh, in the shop here, uh, we're not going to use any real fancy tools, anything like that. So it's the perfect kind of DIY weekend project. Let's get started. We're going to need some tools. A couple of pry drivers. We need definitely some of those. A hammer. Always nice. Pry bar. Torque wrench later. Impact and that will probably do us. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to leave a jack and a safety stand under this. So right here is actually a good spot on the frame. Now I'll just put this guy under the axle. Go up a little more. There we go. Next, we're going to need some stuff. Dirty carpet. Check. Impact. Check. Concrete. That's cold. Check. Wasps, no check. This is too early in the season. So we are working on a hill. Welcome to Wyoming, of course. So I did chalk the wheels on my four-wheeler and the other tire on the other side uh, to keep this trailer from rolling away because I found out earlier it doesn't fit in my garage. So, not cool, but it is what it is. So what we're looking at here is the uh, hub. Uh, the customer asked us to lose the bearing buddy setup. So we're simply gonna replace the cap. We're not gonna destroy this one. I'll give it back to him in case he wants to swap it. And then uh, we're gonna replace the seal in the back. We're gonna clean the bearings out really good. We're gonna put our red blend of Valvoline in it the whole thing back together. So at this point, our next step is gonna to be to remove this cover. So what we're gonna do, they make a special little pair of uh, tongs that go around on this, but uh, so I'm doing this here, not at the school. Uh, we're simply gonna chisel the grease out so we can kind of see the little gap. And then we're gonna take our uh, pry driver and a rubber eyesed mallet, and we're gonna try to separate without breaking stuff. It. You got it. Sometimes you ruin the cap. They're like six or seven dollars to buy a new one. It really don't matter too much. But uh, just get behind it and pry it off. Seems I've been using purple grease, like raw purple or something like that. I'm just gonna set this uh, cap to the side for now. So there's a couple methods that they use to hold this uh, safety little catch thing in. So this one doesn't actually take a cotter pin. And uh, it's got this kind of uh, brass washer that grabs around the, um, the nut. And you can see all this stuff is loose. And it's supposed to be, there is a little bit, you can probably hear that, of end play uh, in this hub. It's not a big deal. 
but um, this style I kind of like because you don't need to go to the hardware store and get a cotter pin. Uh, the grease nipple or grease zerk here, we're just going to leave it. It's a feature of this axle. I don't want to take it out. We're simply going to change the cap so it quits slinging grease everywhere. But if the customer does want to grease it, you can pull the cap off and fill it there. So um, without having all my stuff blow away, I apologize for the wind noise. Uh, all we're going to do is we're going to get behind this guy. So kind of maybe do it in a way that you can... We're not going to bend this little steel cap because we've got to reuse it. Kind of get behind it a little bit. I put my finger here and then, uh, oh, maybe we can get behind it on that side. It's kind of a wiggle jiggle. It's got these little grabber claws on it. And uh, here you can see it, it comes out. So that's kind of, hopefully it focuses and you can see that. I don't know, I really can't see the screen. So I'm hoping that actually turned out. Otherwise we'll look at it in B-roll. Okay, so step 8,000, or whatever it is uh, that we're on, probably involves taking your little digits and just unscrewing this. Uh, if it doesn't come out real easy, sometimes they get a little bit stuck. Um, you can just grab it with a pair of channies and uh, whittle it on out this way. So, whatever works. Um, I don't believe this nut is directional, but let's just take a quick look at it. I'm pretty sure I am the first guy in to this trailer, so that's kind of nice. Uh, yeah, that's not nothing special. I'm just gonna wipe it off uh, with this rag and all that good stuff. I'll probably just do that off camera because it really, it really does not. Everybody, everybody knows how to clean parts. Seriously, seriously, folks. If I gotta show you how to do that, we got some issues. Uh, meanwhile, back at the demo. Um, I'm gonna just set that in my parts tray, just so the wind don't blow it away. Uh, when you pull, I usually pull the hub a little bit and then push it back in, and you're gonna get a washer. They pretty much all have this D-shaped uh, washer with this this uh, flat on it, and they make absolutely sure you don't drop your bearing. If you drop your bearing, you're gonna be buying a new one. It's not like they're hundred dollars a piece or anything like that, but. You know, today's a Sunday, all parts houses are closed, and uh, I don't want to be that guy. And then you can just pull your hub off. This, I'll clean all garbage off the back, get it all wiped down good, and then uh, proceed from there. Da, da, da. Oh, I almost forgot. I can get them clean with just one rag for lucky. That includes the threads. It's kind of a little more about the way you fold the rag and all that. You want to make sure you get all the garbage out in this little crack on this rear race, things like that. So I think we got it uh, with, like I said, just to one rag. I get another rag, I'll clean it uh, one more time. So if you're wondering how the bearing buddy system works. It's kind of a feature of your spindle. Um, I know you see a grease zerk uh, right here. I'll clean this out just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. But uh, there's a grease zerk chilling here and a hole drilled through the spindle and that's why you don't have the uh, excuse me the uh, cotter pin uh, that most other trailers do. And then there's another hole drilled up and you can probably see the little notch out uh, right here. Okay, so they threaded in a grease zerk. So dude pumps the spindle full of grease. Grease squeezes out on that side only. There's one hole. And then the grease flows forward and pumps through your bearings. And then, uh, well, it schmoozes out your cap and all over your wheels. So that's the deal with the bearing buddy system. We're not going to change anything on that. But if you're curious how it works, uh, that's kind of the idea behind the little rubber uh, membrane thing uh, on the cap is so you don't have to take this all apart. But again, it kind of makes a mess. It's kind of handy for boat trailers, but uh, this probably uh, might be a little bit overkill. Again, ask five different mechanics. It's your call. This spindle's done. I'll see you in the garage to clean the hub. All right, folks, just a quick tech tip for you, and that involves 
the seal. So when you have your hub, this is literally what we just pulled off the axle, and they're pretty much all the same whether you have trailer brakes or not. Nothing is different. I mean, the hub is different, obviously, duh, right? But underneath this fine brown ring of goose is this seal. Now you got two options, okay? Option one is you can clean this all up and you can get the part number off it and you can buy the OEM version. Option two is you can take the whole shebang, the way that it stands now, to the parts store and get them to match you up an aftermarket seal. And I think these are like six or seven bucks. So that's the option that I did. I went over to Napa, not a sponsor, and on the shelf, because this is a trailer and it's like a normal trailer without like a specialty axle, uh, they pretty much stock the parts that you need. They're pretty uh, generic as far as that's concerned. So you're going to destroy this seal getting it out of the hub. The OEM, the original, like I said, I'm probably the first one in this trailer. Uh, the OEM one is like welded in there. Like don't even try to salvage it. So always get your number off the seal, obtain a replacement before you destroy your older one. So uh, that being said, the part number for this one looks like a TCS P10439. Uh, I think they have a green one and they have a red one, I think, on the shelf at Namper. It's been a while, not a sponsor. Uh, let's clean this hub out. We're gonna need some cheap paper towels. It's funny how as soon as you try to do something here that uh, you have no bench space. So I'm just gonna reach in there and spoon out as much of this old grease as possible. It's probably coronavirus, just so you know. I'm dying here. But I'm gonna have these repacked bearings. So my customer will be happy. You can see that great old wad just kind of, oh, nice. Did you see that aim? It's perfect. Anyway, if you don't uh, spoon the grease out now, <laughs> I find that when you're screwing around with the seal, somehow it literally just ends up all over whatever it is that you're working on. I'm gonna clean that up so you can kind of see what we're doing here. Oh, jeez. Who cares if you get dirt in the bearing? Because you know what? We're gonna clean the bearing out anyway. Alright. Get ourselves some brick clean. Not that I can smell it with this stuffy nose. So this is definitely an OEM because it got black paint all over it. They put the seal in, then they uh, then they then they paint the hub. So looks like who made it? Uh Fustoid? I don't know. It's a 10-019. Uh, Exter, like the X T E R. No A, I guess. That's cool. Whatever. Let's dig it out. All right. So I got a couple methods of attack for this sucker. Apparently, I brought two screwdrivers. This is a seal puller, and it's designed to uh, do the hook and the grab, just like you think. Uh, if it works great if you have a vice. I don't because it's been committed to another hobby currently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jam the screwdriver kind of at an angle, like like it would look like this, reminding you you got a bearing in here. So if you go like all the way through, you're going to ruin it. So I'm just going to hook this kind of reinforced lip, and I'm going to turn this uh, seal kind of into a heart shape. So I'm going to just use my foot to hold it. And uh, hopefully you can see that, but probably not. I'm sorry. We could also, since this seal seems to actually be moving, which uh, is kind of unique, uh, kind of a tip Mima taught me is you can tip the hub like such and give her a whack and it's actually going to pull this seal out which never actually works that easily 
So you gotta be a little bit careful too. Another tech tip, and this one is impossible to confuse, but uh, you'll notice the two bearings are different sizes. So some trucks and cars, the inner and the outer bearing appear to be the same size, but they may or may not be. Uh, this one, it's, it's impossible to confuse them. So I just set them kind of like that in my parts tray so that I don't get the inner and outer bearing confused. We'll finish wiping out this uh, grease and trash as well. So it has a little bit of grit in it. Um, I don't know if that's a raw purple grease, which I think is a molly, but uh, that's, that's why we're cleaning it. So we want to get all the dirt and all the stuff flushed out. Your next step, <laughs> it's gonna be to wipe off all the purple slash red. Maybe it's just dirty, I don't know. I think there's a couple greases I've seen before that are purple. Like Dello, I think, has one that's purple. And of course, Royal Purple, which I know they sell here. But uh, uh, long story short, we wanna get as much of the grease wiped off of this uh, as we can. Uh, probably Chinese bearing like they all are. CMC, yeah, China. They actually used to, believe it or not, make these here in America, but that's neither here nor there. So we've got two bearings with like 98% of the grease wiped off. Let's clean them in solvent. So I've got some solvent in this cup. You probably cannot see it, but rest assured, it's there. So I get some solvent going, and what solvent am I using? Uh, you can probably use, honestly, anything that you want. Most people. <laughs> Probably use gas. Uh, I like mineral spirits. It seems to interact well with this uh, with this grease. But uh, I kind of grab the bearing between the two digits like such, and you can kind of start slamming it against the side of the container. Whatever you do, don't spin it with compressed air. That sucker will explode. Never done it, but seen it happen. So I'm gonna. Shot spins nice now. We're also going to inspect the bearing for any pink. It starts turning that kind of pink salmon color. The chrome coating is T-rashed, so it's just got a little purple residue. These bearings look a mint, which is kind of expected for a trailer that's actually taken care of. So, anyway, sometimes you see these things and the wheels already fell off, the hub's burnt up, needs an axle, things like that. I'm gonna set this aside for now. I'm gonna blow that out good with some compressed air. I'm gonna get this guy going. So, so now I'm just getting the solvent into the bearing and kind of getting that grease softened up and then it, it comes out. Sorry you can't see what I'm doing here, folks, but I think you can probably figure this part out. All right, at this point, I'm gonna get a uh, expensive towel and uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hold the bearing like such, so the uh, open end, focus. The open end, uh, I can blow compressed air in. So you want like a rubber tip blow gun or something like that. And you're not gonna use a ton of air. But you wanna blow out, kind of making a cup with my hand so I don't sling grease all over the walls. And you can see the purple that's kind of come out of that. So I'm gonna take it back into the solvent, do the same thing again. Okay, and then I'm gonna pick another spot and I'm just gonna blow it out one more time until my rag stays clean. Like now you can see that's happening. Okay. So that's pretty much clean. I'm gonna flush it one last time with some brake clean in case there's any rocks or anything uh, like somehow maybe possibly got into it. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this bearing, exactly the same again. Not a sponsor. That can bit the dust. Hit a shot. So I'm just gonna spin this a little bit, flush it out good, probably get cancer. Should be wearing gloves. Obviously, you've been warned. There we go. All right, perfect, perfect. 
All right. <laughs> so here's the fun part, folks. You need to make sure you got all your stuff at a line because uh, I am using this ginormous tub of grease. <sighs> Fresh. Oh yeah. So what you can do, uh, I, 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 I've used bearing packers before, okay? I know somebody in the comment box is gonna go, hey bro, like, man, if you use a bearing packer, it's gonna save you so much time, man, bro. Like, you should just do that. Well, by the time I get the bearing packer out, get it all cleaned up, put the grease in it, I already have this bearing done. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the bearing kind of with the wide end and you're gonna put a wad of grease in your paw. Okay, and then you're gonna bounce it. Like, I know the camera is obsessed with focusing on my face, but uh, you're gonna bounce. Hey, there you go. If you don't do the bounce, then the grease doesn't work into the bearing. And if you look up here on the top, you can start to see the grease oozing out. That section of the bearing is now packed. So I turn it a little bit and you kind of scrape off the edge of your hand and all of that good stuff. You're not trying to plow the grease into the center of the bearing. You're, you're really just trying to scoop up enough that it smooshes in between the two races or halves or whatever you really want to call it. And you can see it's, it's coming out all along the top. So I just take that stuff from the middle, re-wipe it, recycle it. Oh dear, it's going on the floor, of course. You gotta make like eight messes too, by the way, when you're doing this. So you just keep doing this. If you don't do this, again, uh, I cannot underemphasize that enough. You, the bearing is, is not gonna last, folks. You're gonna be the dude with like the wheel that fell off the trailer and trashed the spindle, the bearing caught fire or something, you know, nasty like that. So you're gonna do that the whole way around. I usually do it a little bit extra and that way I got that overlap in case I managed to forget. So you're noticing the grease is kind of disappearing off my glove and that's because it's obviously going inside of the bearing, which is really where we want it. So. Yes, it will circulate. Yes, it'll move around, but you want that grease to start inside the bearing and not ever have to try to work its way in. So hopefully you can see the little rooster tail that's coming up. Looks like I just got that little spot right there that's left to pack. So, and we do. So at this point, this sucker is done. I'm just gonna take my excess grease and smear it on the outside, kind of thick all that good stuff and I'm gonna set it aside and then I'm gonna pack the other bearing literally the same so might have a spot I missed nope can never really pack too much grease in it's either full and gonna ooze out or it's not full and it's gonna fill up so um, how much grease do you put in it <laughs> ask five different mechanics and then you'll get five different answers and you pick the right one that's how much grease you should put in your bearing. Anyway, uh, the only thing I'm gonna tell you about grease is yes, there are certifications for grease, and the only one I really care about is that it has the uh, wheel bearing designation and that it's disc brake safe. So not all greases are able to be used on like front rotors and stuff on the older cars. That is about the only thing that I'm gonna talk about. Valvoline, Royal Purple, Napa, whatever makes you happy. So let's do the other bearing. So I take the excess grease and I, I put, how much, how much do I put in the hub? Enough. And I smear that into the hub. I wipe all my hands off. Obviously uh, this is a little different because uh, I had to adjust the camera. So I just threw that glove away. But um, you can either wipe your excess grease off of your, uh, you know, from your hand, just, I put it in the hub, whatever, okay? And it's there and it can do its thing. There is a great debate on whether that grease does anything or not. Um, it's there, it's obviously doing something, hopefully. Um, I'm gonna smear this in full. Make sure the races are covered is really my best advice. How much do you put in there? Enough. Now, do not forget to put the bearing in. 
you gotta put it in with the taper end uh, so it fits the taper in the hub. And it's it's only funny because uh, we've we've all done it at some points. But don't 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 forget to put the bearing in before you put the seal in. All right. So otherwise you're going to be you know destroying that seal again to put the bearing in. So I got one more little Mima tip for you, and that is these type of seals because I don't have a seal driver. Maybe you do. I've never used one on these. I really, it's not that critical. It's not holding any pressure or anything like that. But there is a spring on the inside of the seal. So what you need to do, because it's not going to be supported and the spring will more than likely pop out, is you need to pack some grease in the inside of that. Again, if you have a seal driver, it's going to maintain good tension on this inside diameter of that seal and that spring won't pop out but uh, because I'm not going to use a seal driver I'm just going to put this grease in here and that's kind of going to well it's going to be a little shock absorber for it. it's going to serve no purpose other than to be a shock absorber so I'm going to just wipe the excess from my finger into this uh, looks like a double a double lip seal kind of a novel design there. But. Uh, if it does pop out, you can usually get behind it with a pick or something and kind of work that spring back up in where it's supposed to be. You don't have to pull the seal back out. I mean, I've never had it happen on these, but on some of the other type of seals, had to been there, done that. Trust me, it's just easier to put the grease in it. Let's head over to the hydraulic press. <laughs> and install the seal into the hub. All right, folks, this is the uh, Snap-on seal driver. It's part number ID10T. Uh, either way, it's nice and flush on the end. So we're gonna grab the seal. We're gonna place the seal. It kind of will sort of start into the hub. And then I'm simply gonna put a rag over the top of the seal to keep any like pterodactyls or things like that from falling in. And I'm gonna take my mallet and if you look what's happening, you can see that it's starting to turn a little bit. That's, that's kind of normal. We're just gonna tap that down an extra smidge. And this seal is going in literally like perfectly square. I mean, it's, it's all you could expect. So you just tap it flush. And it, it takes you all about that long. And then just feel it, test it, it's good. And uh, everything's good at this point. I'm going to just wipe the extra little bit of trash off the back. Um, just check to make sure my spring is doing its spring thing. And I don't see it, so that's good. All right, we got the bearing in it. It's uh, ready to go back on the spindle. All right, folks. So while you still have your gloves on, uh, which I don't, because I had to manually reposition the camera, uh, we're going to grease up this race in the back and then of course we're gonna wipe it off so a customer doesn't like have a freak out that it's throwing grease everywhere. We're gonna gingerly put a little on the spindle and whether it does anything, I really don't believe it actually does anything, but um, you know, it makes people happy. I don't have to worry about it. I've never had a wheel fall off, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's what I know. All right, so now that that's done, can uh, move our tub aside and we'll just bring the hub without striking that lip seal on anything you'll feel it slide there it went all right and then we'll grab the other bearing that goes into that other bearing acquired so we'll just tip the hub up slider in maybe you'd have the bearing ready to go I don't know Give that the old wipey a little bit. Okay, you gotta be careful that bearing don't fall out and hit the ground, because if it does, well, you're buying a new one. I'm gonna take some grease. I'm gonna grease up my little D washer. Kinda, hopefully you can, you can see that. I got a brand new camera here. I'm kinda trying to learn how it works, and things like that. All of that, but you know, you use one for a couple of years, and, you get used to how it works and uh, never quite know so anyway 
Greased up both sides, probably only got to do one. Uh, it only goes on in one orientation. Uh, your next step is going to be to take this nut, and you can put some grease on it if you want. It really doesn't matter. Just thread that baby on. So your next task is going to be to torque the bearing down. Now, contrary to popular belief, you don't tighten these. If you tighten the bearing, some crap pull out on there. If you tighten the bearing, I got more crap pull out. What the crap? Yeah, why don't I just set these down in the dirt? Uh, anyway, if you tighten the bearing and actually run it that way, I know I'm using the correct tool for the job here. Yeah. I mean, I get it fairly snug. I spin the hub. Uh, if you leave it like this, it's it's not going to go well for you, okay? But what I'm doing is I'm smashing the bearings down good and getting all the free play out, all that good stuff. Oh, nice. And I think you go like 25 foot pounds or whatever. It really, it really doesn't matter. So now that everybody's settled, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this off and have it be finger tight, okay? So I'm going to hold the hub. Well, actually, I'm going to move my pliers. I don't want the hub to turn. And there we go. Okay, so I can control that with my two digits. And at that point, I'm going to grab this little, you know, stamp steel grabber thing. And it looks like it just absolutely perfectly lines up. Sort of. Like, I mean, that thing went on. And that's, you know, you're limited a little bit on the position with this type of a setup as opposed to a castle nut. But if you got to tighten it just ever so slightly, so be it. You just don't want the hub being, being loose. And you'll notice there's absolutely no end play in this now. And she still turns. And we're going to follow up with a little wipey wipe. Whoops. I'm just using these cheap towels. <laughs> Buck a roll, baby. Yeah. Hey, they absorb grease just fine. They also clean your bathroom mirror just fine. So the other towels are a little better for like auto body, things like that. I mean, because they don't just disintegrate like, like these ones do. So uh, anyway, um, do I put grease in the cap, folks? Uh, no. Why not? Because it irritates you guys. Don't put this on with a metal hammer. Some people put grease in the cap because they say, well, if it gets hot, you know, it's gonna melt in there. Well, if that amount of grease that I put in that spindle isn't enough for it, the half teaspoon in the cap ain't really gonna help. I'm gonna clean up all these lug studs next. I'll just get everything, probably just hit them real quick with a wire brush, get the dirt off them. And I put a little Annie sneeze on that and a uh, little fluid film on this part just keeps everything from you know rusting or anything like that i do it on my own so i'm gonna do that on this one and then uh set her down on the ground probably a south dakota thing still people ask why i do it go well if you don't and you gotta take it apart again in a couple years well just have fun with that. On you go. In the hole. In the hole, folks. I kind of suck at this. Oh, let me reposition. Hang on. Oh, yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> First try. Oh, I don't know what's 
mess up that one. There you got it folks that is how you repack the wheel bearings on your camper rv boat trailer utility trailer flatbed trailer whatever you want to call them so trailer brakes no trailer brakes doesn't make a ton of difference i do always check the adjustment of those trailer brakes uh, those drum brakes while i have it apart make sure everything is good check the shoes didn't have to do that on this one because it doesn't have brakes, which makes this job just that much easier. But the bearings, the seals, the cleanup job, all of that good stuff. So you can save yourself a little bit of money by doing that yourself. Uh, just make sure you got the trailer you know, locked so it doesn't go venture down the road uh, when you put a jack underneath it. So anyway, with that being said, uh, give us a thumbs up if you liked what we did here. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.